This week in Nerf, we've got liquidation confirmation, charity auctions, and an automatic priming long shot. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Getting right on into it, this is probably the last time we'll talk about Toys R Us. It's been a constant topic, and I keep saying I'll update you as more things happen and more things continue to happen. This time, however, it appears to be the confirmation of the end on Thursday. Toys R Us filed for liquidation, which means they will be aiming to sell all of their stores and assets and all of that to pay off their debts to the people they owe money to and all of that bad stuff, uh, which means the stores will be closing here in the U.S. This is, uh, this is, this is, kind of something we all knew was coming and it was all but inevitable almost inevitable it's just a bummer to get the final confirmation the final nail in the coffin um this means over 30,000 jobs are going to be lost over the course of the next few months uh several stores have already filed their closure notices which means in the next 60 days they will close Uh, most people are thinking that these stores will stay open for the next couple of months at least, and their closures will be staggered as some may be able to stay open longer than others. But you should get at least 60 days of sales or notification of a store being closed, which I guess is kind of a good thing. We'll have a couple more months of Toys R Us being able to kind of look through sales and things like that and see what can be got for sale price or liquidation price. Um, but I mean, it's the end of an era here in the U S which is definitely a bummer. They did note, however, that apparently Canada is going to be trying to stay above water and stay up and running. Uh, they may actually try and sell the Canadian portion of the company to buyers in Canada to keep things running and keep things afloat as they do have a stronger business there than they do here in the States. Um, we know the UK liquidated recently and apparently the Asian Toys R Us is still doing well. So at least Toys R Us will still live on in some form or some way for the foreseeable future. But we've talked about this a ton and I just wanted to bring you a quick update of how things are going. And that is that, which is definitely unfortunate. But let's move on to something a little bit better, brighter, uh, a little bit more heartwarming. And that is is something that Captain Slug has been doing. Uh, You may have noticed if you follow the Caliburn, uh, which Captain Slug is the creator of the Caliburn, he has been working on different versions of the Caliburn, one of which being a rival Caliburn. And uh, he's been posting a lot of pictures of the prototype version and talking about how it's performing and tweaking and fine tuning before releasing it. And this has led to a charity auction that he has posted up on eBay of the prototype rival caliber. And this is such a cool idea to me. I love that he's taking something that is iconic, like the caliber is right now currently making a rival version that he's going to spread, but taking that prototype and using it for a good cause. Uh, This is going for the load on hunger relief foundation. Um, I, I may have pronounced it improperly. My apologies, but this is awesome. This is so cool to me. Uh, As of the time of this filming, there's like four and a half days left. So when you're seeing this, if you're watching on Saturday, probably about three to four days left on that uh, auction. So go check that out. This is just so, so cool to me and so good. I love when people do things to help others. And this, this is just fantastic to me. And I can't, I can't be happier about it that the community is doing another good thing or someone in the community is doing another good thing uh this makes me think of the toy drive that clowny did like it just i love these things i love when people want to help others and i just i can't uh i can't not share this awesome idea and awesome thing that uh, captain slug is doing so go check that out because it is super cool and i love that he's doing and if you want to get your hands on a prototype version of a new caliber variant This is your way to do it and help some people in the process, which is just awesome. Next up, Blasterforge PH has uh, been posting some things for a while now on a project he's been working on, which is an automatic long shot priming stock. This is something that houses all the internals and everything, all the mechanisms needed to prime the long shot in the stock and do it whenever you fire. And this, uh, it's, it's finished. 
and it's ready for production, and it's cool. It's really cool. Now, it's shooting at one or two seconds for a prime between each shot, so you're not getting lightning fast. Like, you're not gonna spam prime fire with this thing uh, under a high spring load. It can handle up to 20 kilograms, I believe is what, what he's been saying, but uh, that's gonna require some hefty motors and it's gonna slow down your prime, uh, prime rate. But this is a kind of a cool thing for people that may not be able to prime a super heavy spring load, but still want to have an iconic long shot blaster. Or someone that just wants something neat and unique. These, this is just a cool idea. It was one of those things that I think was probably, a, I wonder if I could do this. Let's try it and find out. And sure enough, you can. Uh, so this was cool to see go from idea to complete product that he'll be selling. And the price is going to be around $140 to start if he can't find uh, cheaper materials. But not a cheap product, but an interesting product that I think is even cooler to me just as a project to say, I wonder if this is possible, and, and it is, here it is. So that was... Something I really enjoyed seeing and wanted to share with all of you, the links, of course, for all of these will be down below, as I say, every single week. Uh, moving right along, we have a new third-party company making homemade blasters with their own aesthetic tied into it. And this is the Xenix production model from Northeast Design Corp. And this is a K26 pump action slam fire blaster that utilizes a hopper system instead of a mag system. So it's a bit different than a Caliburn and uh, some of the other homemades we have on the market right now for sale. But this is definitely a unique and visually interesting blaster. I definitely think it's nice to have more and more options as we go along. Uh, the Caliburn isn't going to always be the only homemade style uh, 3D printed blaster on the market, it's nice that we will have more competition because competition breeds creativity and innovation. And uh, this, like I said, it's unique, it's interesting, and it adds another, another option to the market. One of the small downsides of this blaster, however, is unlike the Caliburn, it does only use short darts because it is a hopper system. It doesn't take mags. Uh, you're not going to be able to quickly switch things out. You're going to have to utilize that system that uh, limits you a little bit. But it does allow for this design style for the blaster. And uh, personally, I think they're kind of neat. And they're going to be aiming for, I believe, somewhere between $100 to $130 for the production models for sale. So not excessively expensive, somewhat similar to the other third-party homemade style blasters we see on the market currently, which is definitely a plus for them trying to sell these. And uh, I will look forward to seeing the performance of these and how they, how they do on the field and in people's hands and what kind of numbers people are getting with them and just how they do overall. Because I think it's really cool that we continue to see these new companies kind of enter the fray, as it were, and present their offerings to the community to, to, to have them picked up and, and be developed or, or not developed by the community, but involved with the community to sell to, to have them permeate, I guess would be the, the word to use, through the community and create more and more diversity in the blasters we choose. I think that's always a fantastic thing to see. Now, unfortunately, I know I said this last week, but there's no mod of the week this week because the mod that I wanted to feature that I'm so excited about isn't quite done yet. And after talking with the creator, decided to wait until it is 100% complete, not just functionally complete. So I will share that with you when it is complete, but my apologies for not having a backup this week. But I do have a video of the week that I really enjoyed, and that comes to us from the Nerf Activity Society on YouTube. And this is a video called Outflank the Flankers. This is a Nerf gameplay video of a college game that Really, I enjoyed the editing style. It was very heavily influenced by Overwatch, using music, uh, visual elements, and all that kind of stuff from it. Uh, you get a little bit of a rules breakdown in the beginning, which may or may not interest people. You could have just gone directly into the gameplay potentially in the future, but uh, if this is a sign of things to come from this channel, if they do post regular gameplay footage of this quality, they did things like having ammo counters for their blasters and things like that, which I personally really enjoyed and I felt even though it was headcam footage, it wasn't 
bad. I was not, uh, I didn't feel disoriented or like I couldn't follow along because of it. It was, it was enjoyable. I, I look forward to more from this channel and seeing them grow potentially. And what was really interesting to me is they only have 21 subscribers at the time of this filming. So if you want to check out some gameplay footage and you want to go send them some love, definitely go do that. Let me know what I sent you. Uh, let's just try Let's try and give them a nice bump in subscribers and hopefully uh, give them some motivation to post more gameplay footage because I always, always love to see more gameplay footage. It is, in my opinion, the best way to share the fun of this hobby is to actually show people playing and having a good time because we all do when we're out on the field. Now, that video is going to be right over here, so go ahead and click that if you want to take a look at it. And, uh, you know, there's a, something right, right, right here, something a little different. I, we'll talk about that tomorrow. There'll be a video tomorrow to talk about that. But uh, if you want to click on some other videos, go, go ahead and feel free to do that. Leave your comments on everything down below, what you thought of all the news this week, if there's any mods of the week or videos of the week that you think I should be checking out. And if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe and inform the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.